We have been talking a lot about uh, the effect of the COVID pandemic lockdowns on the tourism industry here in far north Queensland and, of course, still much concern being shared about the end of JobKeeper. One of the parts of that industry we haven't focused terribly much on is game fishing and it was certainly a business that brought in a lot of money to the far north Queensland economy. So we thought we should check in with Daniel McCarthy. You might well be familiar with him. He was, uh, I think, for a decade the president of the Cairns Professional Game Fishing Fishing Association, and he also operates Big Fish Down Under. He's been nice enough to take a call. Daniel, welcome on. Morning, Kia. So what has the pandemic done to the business, yours specifically, and also game fishing generally? Well, as far as industry goes, uh, our our business personally and our industry uh, has been completely wiped out. Um, completely wiped out, Kia, because our, our industry to do, traditionally has, over the last 55-odd years, um, been predominantly um, patroned by uh, international clients. About 95% of our clients across our industry uh, come from elsewhere. And uh, it's, it's important to, to remember that it was really the, the big game fishing industry back in the olden days, so to speak, um, that first started bringing international tourists to our region. And many of the famous dive places today like uh, those uh, pixie bomby around the bottom of number 10 there and uh, the cod hole were all first discovered by game fishermen. So, Daniel, uh, so it, it, yep. well, I was just going to say, what, what, what is the collapse of the industry as a result of this taken out of, of the economy? Well, our industry has been for several years now bringing about $50 million into our local economy. And that's a, a very valuable $50 million because it's bringing it in from overseas. So it's not just recirculating our local our local economy which is uh, obviously very important but when you can inject outside funds into our economy at no cost to our economy that's a very very significant um, very very significant injection there and 50 million bucks a year is nothing to be sneezed at particularly at the moment um, and you know most of us are well, nearly all of us are sole traders uh, running our own little show um, so it's been a very, very tough year for us. You know, people talk about, you know, you've got to be down by 30%, I think it was, to be eligible for JobKeeper. Well, most of the time since, you know, nearly 12 months now since uh, COVID first struck our shores and, and the government had to take pretty drastic action to try and uh, protect everybody and, and uh, all that sort of stuff that, um, you know, is, is appropriate. But that had the, the flow on effect of that has been catastrophic for our industry. With international borders closed, we've been wiped out. You know, we've been down to zero. And even during our peak season, our peak heavy game fishing season, where we go and catch and release a giant marlin out of cans um, and put research tags in them and all that sort of stuff, that sort of August to December, we were running at about probably about 15% across our business and a few other businesses. A, a few of the boats that come up from down south, they didn't even bother making the journey. They just simply didn't bother making the journey up for the season. Um, so, uh, you know, I would say it's it's probably 10% or even south of 10% across our industry in our peak season and the rest of the year, it's absolutely zero flattened. So it's been pretty, pretty catastrophic for our industry here, that's for sure. It certainly sounds that way, Daniel. Uh, look, talking about the, you know, the support measures that the government brought in, uh, w- were you able to access them at all? Because I know there were certainly, you know, in the case of sole traders, circumstances where they couldn't get that support. Yeah, that's right, Gear. We missed out on, on most things. Some of us got a, or got access to a $10,000 marketing grant. Um, which is all well, you know, I don't want to seem ungrateful at all, but... Got to have um, someone to market it to, though, don't you? Well, exactly right. And the way the borders are particularly, I mean, hopefully, hopefully things are going to settle down a bit now, but with borders shutting at the drop of a hat, um, you know, here and there from a case here and there, uh, it has just given people the impression that why would you get on a plane, particularly people at our end of the market. And there is some... There is some potential for, you know, Australians to to come and enjoy what we're doing, whether they're fishing or just having a private charter out exploring the Great Barrier Reef, um, just with their own private little family or group, rather than being on the on the bigger boats with the bigger numbers. And of course, that comes at a much higher price. But those people are generally, you know, they're self-made. They like to be in control of their situation and whatever. The last thing they want to have, as anybody wants to have, is get to the other end on an aeroplane and be told you're getting locked up for two weeks. You know, like. 
they just won't tolerate that. So they're just simply, and I've heard this from so many different people in Sydney, so many different people in Melbourne, which ought to obviously be our two biggest opportunities for domestic um, tourism to try and you know fill some of the gap. Um, most of them are just saying, you know, we're not even going to take the risk. We're just going to holiday within our own state this year and just see how things turn out. So they're not even looking to want to come here uh, because of the border chaos. But yeah, back to your, your question there, Kia. Most of the little, the other um, uh, incentives or opportunities, grants and all the rest of it, uh, sole traders didn't even qualify for them. Uh, they've targeted at the bigger companies that are employing lots of people. And that's very, very important that we support people that have uh, your companies that have uh, lots of people on the payroll. However, there's you know, thousands and thousands and thousands across our tourism sector in general, thousands of people in, Queen, in, in our local area that are sole traders and that have missed out on nearly all of the all of the help. And it's certainly a concern. You know, everybody had high anticipations that um, the Treasurer was going to reveal, you know, something that would be helpful yesterday. And, and uh, you know, I hear that there may still be something in the winds. Let's hope there is. But I do have grave concerns that us small guys, us sole traders that don't have a big heap of people on our payroll, that we may slip through the cracks again. And that would be just diabolical. You know, JobKeeper has been... Um, of some help, There's, that's that's for sure. It's been of some help. Not everybody in our industry is even qualified for that, but um, it's been some help. But I think now it's vital, and the message I would like to get to to the politicians is that it's vital now. The JobKeeper has been helpful, but it's absolutely critical that the government goes the extra mile now and just let's let's see this thing through. They've invested a lot of money trying as best they can to to help people survive this because when it comes back, obviously pent up demand and all that sort of stuff, it's probably going to be next year or the year after even possibly now. Who knows? I haven't got a crystal ball. It's working, that's for sure. Um, but I think it's important the government go extra mile and finish this job, see it through rather than invest all that money and then it, a lot of it be in vain and when a whole bunch of us fall off the cliff. And Daniel McCarthy, the uh, $200 travel voucher scheme, I'm assuming that wouldn't be much help within the game fishing industry. No, not at all, Kia. It's, um, you know, I, I guess the government's trying to do something and that's good and I don't want to, um, I don't want to boo-hoo that at all. But I, I, to be perfectly frank, I think it is a little bit tokenistic, you know, with the borders being shut, the cost to our, just to our Cairns regional economy would be well over $3 million a day. So for the government to throw $3 million at, at, at something that's, you know, apparently going to turn everything back around, I think is, um, you know, a little bit naive. But I, I don't want to seem ungrateful. I think it's, it's good that they're doing something, but I think they really need to pour some petrol on the fire and ramp things up or they're going to be looking at a, a region with, you know, double digit, well into the double digits unemployment figures. And that I think no government, state or federal wants that on their watch. So I think it's um, time to stop stuffing around and get on with it and really and really come up with some in initiatives that are going to make a big difference and pour a heap of cash at it, whatever they're going to have to do. Because at the end of the day, if people are scared to travel, they aren't going to come here. Um, it does highlight the issues that we need to grow other industries so we're not so reliant on tourism. But at the end of the day, there's a, there's a hunger in the world for people to travel. And we've got one of the best destinations to travel. You know, Cairns, Port Douglas, our far north region in general. Why wouldn't you want to come here? And people do want to come here. We just need to make sure that once we get through this horror show of COVID, that once we get through it, the, on the other side, we still have a tourism industry here that is able to offer top shelf products, that is able to, to accommodate those high end people that bring huge numbers of uh, dollar per head into our economy. So otherwise they're just going to find another destination and then we'll be struggling for decades to try and get it back again. And finally, Daniel, what is the future then for, for yourself even? Uh, you know, are you going to be able to survive until things do get back, do you think? Well, that's, that's a very, uh, you know, we'll survive one way or the other. Whether our business, our current business survives and our industry survives is, uh, 
is a day by day thing at the moment, Keir. It really is. So, you know, we're, I'm obviously, to be perfectly frank, looking around at other businesses, looking at other jobs, looking at other ways I can be well invested in the community and continue to, to try my best to make a, a difference around the place. You know, I've obviously been very politically involved and that isn't going to change. But, um, you know, as far as our industry and our business concerned, it it's really is day by day. And I just, and I'm unable to answer that question at the moment. All right, Daniel. Um, I really appreciate you uh, giving us a, an update in a, in a particular, you know, a particular sector of the tourism industry that's been, you know, potentially just hit harder than any of the others, uh, which is remarkable considering how hard they've been hit. Daniel McCarthy, thank you for your time and good luck. Thanks, Keir. Appreciate it. Daniel McCarthy there. Uh, so yeah, he operates a big fish down under. Uh, and was also the president of the uh, Professional Game Fishing Association here in Cairns for, I think, about 11 years.